it's time to do, you know, a little bit of loving, a little bit of camera loving, because there's a specific camera here that I just ain't been giving enough loving on this channel, and it deserves some serious loving. And a bit of hating, but mainly loving. Um, that camera is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. What an absolute weapon this camera is, mate. That might have peaked. Wash scan on you lots, I hope you're all. Sweet, so the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, a camera I've had for a year now, um, and I think I've finally, you know, elevated to a point where I can say, yeah, I can actually talk about this camera and my opinions. I've shot my Nvidia campaign with this, I've shot a load of brand stuff. I've just been out to Madeira to shoot a new campaign for my boy Mikey V, which is coming out in January, so I can show you a little bit of that without obviously the NDA stuff in there. And honestly, this thing is, in my opinion, for 1700 pound i don't think there's anything in the well it probably is a few things that you get value for money especially in terms of the image quality on this thing now you all know i'm a sony fanboy i love sony cameras they're amazing at shooting video but the image that comes out of the black magic is just superior to pretty much every single camera under eight grand. Now there's a load of reasons why I wouldn't use a black magic on a shoot. Um, really terrible autofocus. Well, it ain't got any, so no autofocus. No flip screen, you know, terrible battery life. Like, come off it, mate. Like, my nan's bloody Nokia 3310 would absolutely smash this thing to... <sighs> I don't need to go into that. I'm gonna go through my favorite aspects of this camera, some of my absolute hatreds of this camera, because there are a few of them, and I'm gonna tell you why I decided to actually get the camera in the first place and what made me, you know, jump over to the Blackmagic system, because there are a few little reasons why I did, and there is no other and, let's get stuck in, mate, bosh. So, my favorite thing about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, other than the fact it's like 1700 quid and didn't leave a massive dent in my pocket, is the image quality. Now, the image quality out of this thing is just levels ahead of the Sony cameras, the Canon cameras, in my opinion, obviously it's quite a, it's quite a subjective thing, but the image quality that comes out of this is stunning. Very, very close to extremely high-end cameras. Even though it's only a Super 35 sensor, I much, much prefer that Super 35 look that comes out of the Blackmagic compared to some of the full-frame cameras. I don't know what it is, the image is just great. I really, really like it. It's really rich, it feels very full. The image feels full, it doesn't feel kind of light and thin. I don't, I don't really know how to explain the way I feel about the image, this could get weird. But the image is beautiful and the colors that come out of it, in my opinion, are second to none. I honestly think the skin tones are stunning. The way it renders green, I'm actually a really big fan of how this camera renders green. Some people don't agree with that, but I really, really do. The dynamic range could be a little bit better, but at the end of the day, 13 stops is still a very, very decent amount. And even better than the dynamic range is that 12 bit. We've got so many different shades of red, green and blue that every shade, every highlight just rolls off so bloody smooth like butter. It is very, very bang. Obviously we've got 6K. I don't necessarily need 6K, however, that punching in option is very, very good. Now, after shooting on this particular camera, after shooting on other cameras, clients have actually actively come up to me and said, mate, the image quality looks beautiful. Can we shoot on that camera again next time? I'm like, yeah, of course we bloody can, I want to. That is a big thing. A lot of my clients have been really, really happy with the image that comes out of this. So if you can get over the little niggles that this camera has that we're gonna get onto, you've got an absolutely stunning commercial image that will come out of this camera. So let's talk about what actually made me want to invest in the Blackmagic in the first place. Now this is where I wanna give a shout out to my boy Keenan. Keenan brung his Blackmagic 4K on a shoot in Madeira last year. And we all share our files. So when we go on a trip, me, Mike, Keenan, whoever I'm with, we will share each other's files so that we can use that footage of each other shot in our films for whatever we need. If we're doing like a campaign or it's for a specific shoot or we actually need shots of each other or whatever, we'll share each other's footage. Now, 
I was a bit skeptical. I was thinking, oh, black magic, be raw. Raw is going to be an absolute ball ache for my laptop, for my computer, yeah. However, I was started playing about the B-Raw files, and I was like, you what, mate? Like, what's going on here? Why is it playing so smooth? Are you sure you ain't giving me progress? Anyway, I'm playing around with the B-Raw files, and my playhead is absolutely skated along my timeline, like it's on a bloody ice rink. It's so smooth, so slippery. I'm like, take me money. How do I get one of these bad boys? Because I was super worried that the B-Raw was going to be the biggest issue for me in terms of my workflow. I don't want to be like messing about with really dodgy codecs, but I honestly and quite safely say that the Blackmagic Raw is probably the nicest, easiest to use codec that I've ever used. Obviously, it's a compressed RAW. You get all of that flexibility in post. You can change your exposure, you can change your ISOs, you can change your bloody white balance. You've got everything that you need there. That's another really important thing for me. If I can focus on my white balance after I've made my shot, so it's one less thing I need to worry about on the shoot. That is a huge benefit for me, being able to take away distractions and settings and things that I can actually do in post. Um, so I can just focus on my composition Position, my framing and what I'm trying to say in my shot. Another big thing about recording on the Black Magic is the way that it records data. Now, obviously we have them SD and that CF Express cards in there. Bloody, they're expensive, mate. We can record out of the USB-C to SSD drives out of this thing. SSDs are super, super cheap. I've got a load of the Samsung T5 one terabyte drives. You can get them for like 130 quid, one terabyte, mate. And it writes pretty much every single you know, codec and frame rate and resolution on it. We're laughing, mate. Literally just chuck that SSD in your laptop. I didn't realize how impressive that was gonna be for my workflow, um, and I'm super, super happy about that. And I wish other cameras, Sony, bloody Canon. I know you wanna make money off your SD cards and all that, but take a bit of, you know, initiative from Blackmagic because that is huge for me. Now, before I go on to the really big cons that I've found with shooting with this camera, we have to talk about this screen at the back and the interface. The user interface on this thing, have I got a battery? I haven't got a bloody battery. Give me a sec, people. Wanna turn on, bruv? Nope, don't fancy it. That's one of the cons. There we go, bosh. So let's talk about the user interface. I have never in my life of being a child, then like a bit of a dodgy teenager, then turning into the kind of Muppet bloke that I am now. I've never used an interface which is as nice, easy, and as intuitive as the Black Magic user face. Honestly, this touchscreen is so simple, so easy to use. I feel like I could give this to a two-year-old and they'd know what they're doing. It is so simple. These nice big buttons, super easy to touch, really, really responsive. It just makes life so much easier. Some of the menus on like the Canons and the Sony systems are like, what? Are you taking the piss? Honestly, going back to like some regular camera user interfaces makes me feel a bit ill after using the Blackmagic because it is that damn good, that simple, that intuitive, and obviously it has helped massively by that huge five inch screen that we have at the back. Now, initially, I really didn't like the black magic form factor. The fact that it's so damn wide and it sticks out a load at the front, so it's almost like a T, it's just very, very awkward. But I've realized I love this screen so much. So I thought, how the hell is a camera company gonna make a camera with a massive screen at the back that is gonna be a square? It's just not gonna be possible. So the user interface and the screen at the back is just absolutely banging. Definitely not something to overlook. So onto the cons that I've found with this camera. And I've had some very, very serious cons with this camera in the field that I've had to adapt to and find different ways of making it work. I think the first one's pretty obvious, the battery life. Um, I've been in so many situations where I've wanted to either fly on a gimbal or I've wanted to go handheld for a second or take my camera off of a tripod and then get a quick shot handheld, but obviously I'm tapped in at the side. Honestly, the battery life is so, so bad. I wish that this camera had a better battery system. Obviously, we've only got them little Canon E6 batteries, which are shocking. This camera is so power hungry. I really hope the next iteration of this camera has a better battery option on it. I know they wanna keep the form factor low, um, but obviously there are ways that you can get around this. You can tap into that 12 volt at the side. You are gonna to have to have something coming off it. But the battery life is so bad. It's given me a few issues a few times, which, leads on to another issue I've had with the camera, which is the fact that when the battery dies, that shot isn't recorded and that shot is corrupted. Because obviously the camera can't write that last bit of metadata. Whereas some of the more well-known brands like Sony or Canon and whatever, if you're using the right battery, when the battery dies, it finishes writing that file before it then shuts the camera down. Blackmagic, 
don't seem to do that. If anyone knows of an update or a workaround to that, please let me know, but my experience is I've had a few nightmares with it. Luckily, I haven't used any internal batteries or anything for a shoot that's important. Obviously, I wouldn't be that bloody stupid, but it is a bloody nightmare. If you're running around on a gimbal, which I like to just keep these little batteries in on a gimbal, it's just so much easier than having cables flying out all over the place. I like to try and keep it simple, keep a battery in there when I'm on a gimbal, obviously just swap them out every 15 bloody minutes. Obviously you have to take a load of them out with you. It's not great, mate. So I would recommend finding yourself like a V-Lock or a big Sony MPF with a 12 volt that can go into here and your issue should be bloody solved, mate. Bosh. And another like reliability issue that I've got with this camera is, obviously, you know, I said I love the fact that you can record out of the USB-C onto an SSD. As much as that is great, there is like a little bit of a, a little bit of an anxiety worry that if that cable comes out mid record or a connection comes loose on that, you're in a bit of trouble and you're, again, your file is bloody corrupt and buggered, mate, because it ain't gonna finish writing it. Obviously, you can combat that with the expensive CFast and SD cards, and you can obviously get the USB type C connectors that hold it in place really nice and strong, but in the back of my mind, that is always something I'm thinking about. So when I'm doing like long form stuff, like I have to kind of cut and then re-roll so that I know I've got all of that footage, we go again. So that is just something that does annoy me a little bit, but then again, maybe I should not be such a tight little bastard and actually buy, you know, SDs or CF Express cards. So as much as I love the monitor on the back of this thing, I just hate the fact that it's fixed. Now, I don't really want the monitor to flip out to the side. I would love if the monitor flipped upwards, similar to how the Sony a7III's monitor flips. I don't necessarily need to see myself in a lot of shots when I'm shooting on the Blackmagic. I'd much rather use a different camera for that kind of stuff. But when I'm doing like high angle shots, I wanna be able to see the screen. And when I'm doing low angle shots, if this flipped out, that would be huge because then I won't have to use an external monitor for a lot of the shoots. And I also won't have to use an external monitor on a gimbal when I'm doing high and low shots. I do think if they come out of a Mark II or a second version of this camera, it has to have a rotating screen on it. It just has to. And the last issue I've got with this camera is basically just how annoying it is to fly on a gimbal. Like most gimbals now, like the Ronin S2, the Crane 2S, the Crane 3S, probably a load of the other gimbals as well. They're actually big enough now to support like a camera with such a wide body that also goes so bloody long. A lot of other cameras like the Sony's, the Canon's, whatever the food, every other camera out there pretty much, they are a lot more compact. They're not so wide and they're not so long. They're more like blocky, like squares and all of the, you know, it's basically like a block, whatever. They're so much easier to fly on a gimbal. It's just a bit finicky, just a bit annoying. Takes a bit longer to balance it. But if you can find your workflow, you're in good hands, mate. And other than that last little number, that's pretty much everything that I love and hate about the camera. I definitely think there's a lot better cameras out there for doing like video work, yeah? This hasn't got bloody autofocus. I would 100% pick something like the A7S, the FX6, to shoot more video style work that requires autofocus, really good battery life, something that I need IBIS for. But if all you really care about is the image quality, in my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck that you can get. The image is so beautiful. And, and I've had so many different shoots this year that I've specifically wanted this camera for the image quality. And I'm sure there's gonna be loads of things that you do as well. And, <sighs> This is the thing with new codecs and new cameras. You've got to give them a go to find out whether they're the right one for you. And until I used the Blackmagic RAW, I was like, nah, this camera is just gonna be a nightmare. Once I used it, I was like, mate, sort me out with one of these cameras. How can I get my hands on one? And then I bought one in Jan. So here we are, mate, recording on a Blackmagic talking about a Blackmagic. If you're looking for a camera to step up your image quality, I 100% say that the Blackmagic is so worth investing in. 1,700 pound with a, a lens that's like 500 quid, you can then get some cheap Canon glass like the 50mm 1.8, 85mm 1.8, whatever. This is such a cheap and affordable thing to invest in. This camera is the bollocks. Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you lot think of the Blackmagic in the comments. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are the things you do? Don't like, yeah, whatever, mate. Just, just write me something in there and we can, you know, be mates. And I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bye.